In this video, we're tackling one of the most common questions that I get here on the channel. Resolve color management or color space transforms? Which one should I use? Which one is better? What's the ideal workflow for color managing my images? Well, let's dive in and take a look and do a side-by-side -side comparison of these two approaches here inside of Resolve. We're going to start with Resolve Color Management, okay? So right now, I have nothing happening in my timeline whatsoever. We're starting from zero. I just have a timeline of some log images here, okay? I'm going to go to my project settings. I'm going to go to my color management, and I'm going to set my color science to DaVinci YRGB Color Managed, and I'm going to flip automatic color management off so that I can exert the control over this process that I need to in order to make the most of Resolve Color Management. I'm going to go down here to Custom, and for my input color space, if I look at the material I have in this timeline, some of it is airy, uh, and actually most of it is airy, so I'm going to select that even though my current shot is red, because I'll be able to tag that shot differently in just a moment here. So I'm going to say Airy Log C3. Timeline color space, I'm going to set to DaVinci Wide Gamma and Intermediate. Timeline working luminance, I'm going to set to Custom 10,000. That's my preference. It essentially ensures that I'm not clipping anything out in the high end of my image before I've even had a chance to grade it. Input DRT is going to be set to none because I won't need this, uh, given that I've set my working luminance here. And for my output DRT, I'm going to choose luminance mapping because that's my preference. And for my output color space, I'm going to say Rec 709 Gamma 2.2. Okay, let's now save this and get a look at what we've got here. Now, here on this image, because I've set up my color management in my project settings, I actually don't need to and can't even change my uh, input color space setting for this clip because it is an R3D raw clip, which means Resolve is going to handle things for me under the hood automatically, and it doesn't need my help, and in fact won't let me give my help for color managing this image. Okay? If we look at the rest of our images, some of these are going to need to be manually tagged. So I'm going to right click, and uh, I'm actually clicking on shot 2, holding shift and clicking on shot 6, and I'm now going to right click and go to input color space, and all in one stroke going to set these to project area log C3. Okay? So I've now set up my color management on these images. And let's just park on this image. I like this one uh, as a sort of test case. And I'm going to grab a still. Okay? So this is a functional example of setting up Resolve Color Management and giving ourselves a foundation from which we can begin to do a creative grade. Right? Okay, let's turn everything off. I'm going to go to my project settings. I'm going to set my color science to DaVinci YRGB. And I'm going to set my timeline and output color space to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, Rec. 709 Gamma 2.2, but before I hit save here, I just want to emphasize, I could set these things however I want to, and it would not change the image that I'm about to see. No matter what I flip these settings to, now that my color science is set to DaVinci YRGB, once I hit save, I'm going to return to seeing my image in its original camera log state. Okay, So this is not directly controlling color management. This is controlling metadata tags that are involved in some other processes in Resolve. Okay, So let's hit save and watch what happens. As predicted, I'm back to my log state. And now let's set things up using CSTs. I'm going to go into my open effects and go to color space transform. And I'm going to say this is airy wide gamut 3, airy log C3. And I want it to go to DaVinci wide gamut, DaVinci intermediate, no tone mapping. And I'm going to label this in. And now let's do two new nodes. And in the third node, we'll say color space transform from my working space, DaVinci wide gamut, DaVinci intermediate. Rec 7 or 9, Gamma 2.2. Okay, I'll set my tone mapping method to luminance the same way. And I'm also going to use some custom mapping here and set my gamut mapping to my preference. Now, this is setting up my color management using nodes, using CSTs, and I would simply do all of my grading here in the middle in between these two nodes. Now, let's do a quick comparison. What difference do you think I'm going to see versus what we just did in our project settings if I wipe? Let's just go to another image, make sure we're wiping full frame, which we are, like so. And I'm now going to wipe. No difference at all, right? This is the punchline. This is what I wanted to share with you guys. I guess I could have made it a little bit faster and just started by saying RCM versus CSTs. No difference. End of video. See you next time. But I wanted to actually prove it out to you and show you that Resolve Color Management and Color Space Transforms are actually the same thing. Resolve Color Management is simply utilizing color space transforms under the hood. So which one is better is a bit of a misleading question because neither is better. They do fundamentally the same thing. Now, there are, of course, differences in the way that we got there in our project settings versus here. And if you want my take or you want to know how I like to set things up in my actual practice, we talk about that lots in other videos. But to make it simple here for today, 
all I would do to tweak what we've got here, I would keep this workflow. I like to work using color space transforms or what we would sometimes call node-based color management. That's my preference because I like to be able to see my entire journey spelled out and get to control my journey if I need to. And really the only tweak that I would make from here is I would use resolves group function to free up some real estate in my node graph. So I'm gonna do that same trick of clicking on shot two, holding shift and clicking on shot six to grab all these shots. And I'm going to right click and add into a new group. We'll call this log C3, okay? Now I'm gonna go over here to this shot where I set up my input transform or my IDT. I'm gonna tap on this node and hit command C to copy it, hit delete to get rid of it. And now I've got another set of dots, another pair of dots up here in my node graph because I've added these clips to a group called log C3. And I'm gonna use this group as a way of input mapping all of my uh, material for the same camera at the same time. So I'm gonna go in this case to the group pre-clip level. This is the section of my group node graph that applies operations before I even get to the clip level, which makes it perfect for what I wanna do, which is to apply my initial input transform. And you can now see that all of my area material is a member of this group and is receiving this input transform. And now to finish things out, I'm gonna go back over to the clip level of this shot, tap on my out node and hit command C. Now I'm gonna hit delete and I'm gonna to go to the fourth dot from the left here, from the timeline level of my node graph, create a new serial node and hit command V so that I've now got the same output transform for all of the shots in my timeline. So this, just like I had a minute ago, is identical to what I have set up in my project settings. I simply prefer to work this way. I like to be able to see every step in the journey of my color management and I like to be able to control it and alter it if need be in uh, certain edge cases. So that's my preference just in terms of process. But if we're talking about the reproduction, the character of the image that we get using uh, Resolve Color Management versus using color space transforms, the end reproduction, if you are doing things correctly, will be identical. If that's a, just a refresher for you and you already knew it, then I'm glad to refresh for you. If that's news to you, let me know in the comments. I think this is something that might be secretly confusing a lot of us. I know it confused me a little bit when I was first learning these things inside of Resolve. So let me know in the comments if this is old news to you or new news to you, and if you find this helpful in your workflow, and which of these you feel uh, you're gonna have better luck with or you're gonna wanna use in your color grading workflows going forward.